Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. For today's video, I'm gonna be sharing some brands that I only have one product from. That was, that was two fingers, but I only have one product from. And based on that one product, do I wanna try more? What are my thoughts on the brand? What's on my list? Slash, also maybe you guys could give me some recommendations if you have more that you think I need to try. So I saw my friend Lauren May Beauty film this video. I filmed something very similar to this quite a few years ago. So I thought this would be a fun one for today. I'm gonna leave Lauren's video and her channel linked down below. I'm sure most of you guys know Lauren and follow her, but if you don't, she's almost at 100,000 subscribers. So check her channel out. Subscribe if you're not already. Also, if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe too if you like this type of video, but let's go ahead and hop into it. Okay, a new one. This is from the brand Say. So this is their slip tint. I picked this up in that Sephora haul and I wear the shade three. This. I'm still testing it out to give a final review for you guys, but I am enjoying it. So this is a, they call it a skin tint, but I would describe it as a tinted moisturizer because for me, the texture of this is not quite what I would consider a skin tint. It's pretty thick like a tinted moisturizer, but the coverage level is still pretty minimal like a skin tint. So I feel like it's kind of a hybrid. It has SPF 35 in it, and I'm kind of going back and forth on this. One day I'll be like, okay, this looks amazing, and then the next day I'm like, no, it's sitting weird, it's pilling. I find that it's semi finicky, so depending on the base that I prep with, this either looks great or it just doesn't work. Like it's definitely very prone to pilling and I've heard similar comments from you guys whenever I've mentioned it in videos that you can't seem to get it not to pill. So do I wanna try more from the brand? Yes and no. I actually had their liquid highlight in my Sephora cart recently and then I took it out but I still might get it because they sell it in a mini. But if you have recommendations from Say, let me know. It, it is a newer brand at Sephora so I've been like interested in trying more. This, I wouldn't say, has like totally swayed me to be wowed by the brand though. Unlike this next product, how do you like that segue? The Kosas Cloud Set Powder. I won't spend too long on this because if you've been here, you know I love it. I wear the shade Breezy. It is this just fantastic baked powder. And I wanna get more from Kosas. When I mentioned this in my Sephora VIB so recommendations, you guys left me a lot of recommendations for the brand. I would say the most common recommendation I was seeing was for the concealer. So I've got that in my cart right now. Um, I also was getting some recommendations for their brow product or like the brow gel. I first I thought I was going to pick that up, but I have picked up a lot of brow gels recently. If you guys have been watching my recent videos, you've probably noticed that. So I kind of had to put myself in check like, wait a minute, girl, let's slow down on the brow gels. Let's let's pause so that might be a future purchase but i would say the concealer is going to be my next try this has definitely made me want to try more from kosas sometimes i say kosas sometimes i say kosas kosas i don't know i've heard people pronounce it all all of the ways this one i need to know if i am making a mistake because i'm not sure but I think this is the only thing I've tried for Makeup Revolution, but there is something in the back of my head that's like, no, you have something else or you've tried something else. I don't think that I have something else because I looked, but I'm like, you tried something at one point. You must have. But this is all I can find. This is the Makeup Revolution powder. It's their Pressed Powder Infinite. I don't really like this that much. This does not make me want to try more from the brand. I do have their hair care line. So they sent me their like dupe. <laughs> for Olaplex, which I mentioned in another video, you can't truly dupe Olaplex because the active ingredient is patented, but patented, patented, but I have been trying it out. I used it yesterday when I washed my hair. My hair feels really soft today, almost too soft, if you know what I mean. But in terms of the makeup line, this is all that I've tried. This powder, it's supposed to be translucent. It's not, it has quite a white cast. So I would say if you're like my skin tone or like paler you might enjoy this but i don't see it working for a lot of people because i mean even on my hand like look how do you see this can you see that it's like totally white and it can look pretty dry it looks nice on camera if you're going to film with it if you're going to take photos with it unless they're flash photos don't use this for flash because of the white cast but it's okay for the price but it doesn't make me want to buy more that being said though i've heard great things about the line. So if you have recommendations for specific products, let me know because I feel like I've heard that there are hits and misses. Maybe I need to do a full face of 
makeup revolution. Do I want to do that? I don't know. Do you want to see that? Let me know. New to me, Danessa Myricks. This is their balm contour. I picked up the shade light too. You guys, I'm very sad to say that I don't think that I like this and I really wanted to. This is a new brand to Sephora. Danessa Myricks is a really talented makeup artist, so I was so interested in the line. And even though I don't love this, I still have a lot of interest in the line. And I think especially when more products are launched and available at Sephora, I will definitely try more. But so far, I don't like this. So what I've noticed, this in the pan, it looks like a nice like neutral tone for contouring. I mean, it actually, no, it doesn't. But on the skin and especially on myself, it pulls like straight orange. Like here, this color looks like it would be fine, but once I start to blend it out, it looks so, so warm on me, which that's fine for a cream bronzer and I use it like a cream bronzer, but I'm, I'm a little disappointed that this is called the Balm Contour when I don't think the tone is great for contouring. It's weird though, because I see it here and I think, okay, that looks nice, but once I start to blend it out onto the skin, I don't love it. I also find that it doesn't stay very well and especially if I like try to do it first and apply foundation over top, it ends up looking a little bit messy. I get pilling with this too, but again, that could be some different base products. I have not yet found a way that I love this, but I want to keep trying because when I was reading the reviews on Sephora, that was kind of what enticed me to buy this to begin with because a lot of people really like it. So I'm like, I just need to play around some more. The brand doesn't have specific instructions on how to use this. They say it can be used basically any way. They say use your fingers, use a brush, use a sponge, apply it under foundation, over foundation, over powder. Like they basically say you can use it any way you want. And I feel like I've tried every way that, that I just listed and I'm still not loving it. I think my favorite way so far, weirdly, was with my finger. I applied it like that the other day. I took it on my hand and then just like kind of drew it on, tapped it out. I liked the way it looked. But again, I actually ended up washing my face because I was like, this just looks too orange. And I even said to my roommate, I'm like, doesn't this just look not like a contour? And she's like, yeah, it just looks like you put on a ton of blush because that was how like orangey red it was pulling. But anyways, all of that to say, I actually still want to try more from this brand and I'm pretty sure I will eventually. So if you have a recommendation, let me know. Okay, this next one. I'm laughing because I keep calling it the wrong brand and I've done it in at least two or three videos now. Let me know if you have noticed. This is the J-Cat, the J-Cat Aqua Shorance Foundation. Almost every time I've mentioned this in a video, I have called it the Catrice Aqua Shorance Foundation. And I always put like a little note on the screen like, hey, I meant to say J-Cat. I do not know why my brain wants to associate this with the brand Catrice. This again i won't spend too long on it because i feel like i have just trashed this in every review let me just put the photos back on the screen the ones that i shared of this just completely breaking up on me does not make me want to try more from the brand but again i don't know i could be swayed i could be swayed but there aren't a ton of standouts that i want to try that was like the one product from the brand that was on my list like okay i gotta pick that up and see what it's all about and I did, and I don't love it. So makes me not really want to try more. Let me know. Are you very brand loyal? Like you have specific brands that you go to? Or do you feel like you purchase kind of a bit of everything? I would say I'm both. But I think if I wasn't on YouTube, I think I would be even more just brand loyal. Like I have certain brands where I'm like, I know I like most things from them. Okay, this next one. Does this count? Because it's technically two but they're the same thing and I bought them together and they're the same type of product let me know if this counts this is from makeup geek and I don't think these are in the line anymore I'm pretty sure I bought these last year for black friday which I'm planning to do a black friday sale video if I'm able to get it filmed in time because in the second half of the month I'm going to be going on a work trip so I have to pre-film a lot so I want to get a black friday video up if I know the sale is far enough in advance. I hope to do that. Anyways, that's when I picked these up, but I think that they actually discontinued these, but these are loose pigments. I picked up Sugar Rush and Kaleidoscope. In the packaging, they look like two very different shades, but swatched out, they're extremely similar. Now, I have used these probably twice. I've 
barely touched these and I actually regret buying them. I think I was expecting these to be, I don't know why, I don't know why I was expecting this, but I wanted them to be more of a sheer base with like a beautiful iridescent sparkle that I could use as a topper. But these are extremely pigmented and a very noticeable base. So I, I was picking them up wanting to use them like toppers, but I don't think they really work as toppers. Like these should be the star of the show. Makeup Geek has very recently redone their line though. So if you have favorites from them, let us know down below. LYS, another newish brand at Sephora. I picked up the bronzer earlier this year. This is the No Limits bronzer. I have the shade Motive. And the other product I wanna get from them is the powder because you guys have recommended the powder and the blush to me. And apparently I'm on a powder kick this year and I just wanna buy all the powders. Um, the blush, I think I'm gonna hold off for now cause I'm like, I have more than enough blushes. But I do really want to try the powder from this brand. I really enjoyed this and I like that they're more of a reasonable price point at Sephora. Like some of their products honestly rival drugstore prices at this point. Like I want to say the blush is $16 and these days we're seeing drugstore blushes like well over $10, $12. So I think it's really reasonable for a high-end brand at Sephora. This one I've had some more from the brand way 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 back in the day but not recently enough to remember this is the hard candy sheer envy hydrating primer this is probably my favorite primer these days i talk about it often and i used to have another primer from hard candy way back in the day when this brand was like super popular what is the name of the primer that everybody used i can't i cannot remember the name of it but i had that and maybe a few other products but this is the only thing i've tried in probably a decade I see, it makes me wanna try more from the brand, but I don't know that there's anything that stands out to me, like I need to pick that up. So yes and no, it makes me wanna try more. It makes me wanna always have this in my collection. That's what it does. So the palette is the It's Freaking Bats palette from Shroud. I thought that it would be so many more palettes, but as I was going through, I was like, you know what? From this brand, I have some other products from them, or if I have one palette, I've tried others before. So this is the only one I'm pretty sure where I just have the one palette. The quality of this is phenomenal. They are like working on this little roof back here. So if you see someone walk by, don't get scared. I did yesterday when that happened, but just a warning. This palette is so pigmented. It's honestly shocking. Like, especially the shimmers. I've never had shimmers pick up easier on a brush and just apply with full opacity right on the first swipe. Like you barely have to put in any effort and you get so much impact out of these. Now it can almost be to a fault with some of these matte shades. That's just my personal take because they're so pigmented that it can be almost a little tricky to work with. I would say it's not necessarily a beginner friendly formula. I would say this is like intermediate to advanced, but if you want that extreme pigmentation and like full opacity, you really can't beat this. That being said, I like this. I love that it was a collab with um, Beaut Bean, which she has a new name now, Batty Bean. And I think she really nailed this. I think it's so cute for Halloween. That's why I had it in my Shot My Stash, the previous rotation. But in terms of wanting to try more from the brand, I almost think this turned me off from them a little bit just because the way that this launch ran this palette. I bought it on pre-order October like 6th maybe or 3rd, like something like that last year. And I didn't get it until the spring. And I totally understand that, you know, it's an indie brand. It's that's typically one person or a very small team. But I think just the way that some of that was handled gives me pause wanting to purchase from the brand in the future. Cause I'm like, you know what? By the time I got the palette, I was like, oh, well, I, I bought this wanting it to be a Halloween palette and now it's spring. And beyond the delays, which I get were probably out of their control. I think my frustration as a consumer was just with the lack of communication. Cause there was a while there. I'm like, okay, am I getting this palette? Like what's going on? But the formula is great. So let me know down below if you have any recommendations from these brands, if you think I should try out more. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.